World famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WIFO. 105.5 FM, Big Dog Country Radio. And Bob, how are you doing? I'm doing good. More importantly, how are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm probably about uh, 70% there. Yeah. Uh, if, if you noticed, I, I walked in today without a walker or a cane. And uh, so uh, last week or so, I've been able to ditch the walker, ditch the cane, Still limping a little bit because, you know, I had total replacement hip surgery on my right hip. I'm part robot now. i got titanium hip in my right hip. Plus, I've got major problems with my lower back uh, with uh, five bulging discs, L1 through L5, that's causing a lot of problems not only for my lower back but also radiating over in my hip. So I'm just a mess. And so... <laughs> I am. I'm just a mess because, you know, I've got two doctors. I got Dr. Grise, who did the, uh, from Bone and Joint Institute, who did the hip surgery. And I got Dr. Lamo. Dr. Lamo is the one who's working on my back, We're giving me, just got my second epidural like, uh, last week to try to reduce that inflammation and uh, pain in my lower back, which is affecting my hip and my lower back. So uh, I'm just a mess. Uh, it's just, you know, one's affecting the other. And then I'm going to physical therapy to, Smart physical therapy and Garrett's doing a good job of trying to, to, to do the physical therapy to to, to help me heal up. So um, uh, it's just been a longer process than I thought because of how much my back has been affecting my hip. And so, I mean, last week I had a cortisone shot of of, uh, of steroids in my hip. I had the epidural in my back, and that's after all the surgery and the epidural I had before. So. Uh, just trying to get it all fixed up and, and worked up. At least I'm walking now without uh, any assistance. I uh, do try to be careful uh, and because uh, I don't want to fall. Because um, I have been uh, told by a, the uh, friend of ours who uh, has wife as a nurse that if I fall, no one pick me up. Wait till the mechs get there because if someone tries to pick me up, they could pop that hip right out of its socket. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you got the titanium rod that was the, basically, <laughs> I don't know how they got it down into my femur, but uh, they said that you ought to take a look at the video. But I sh they have videos online that you can see how they get the, how they n knock those titanium rods down into your femur. And then they clean out the socket and put a titanium socket in there with the plastic ball on the end of the rod that comes out of your femur. And so um, uh, those things can pop out if you're not careful. And so I'm trying to be uh, careful with that and doing what the doctor says. And so um, now I believe I can say when I came back about what a couple of weeks ago, two or three, I think it was about two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, I came back and and tried to sit here for the three hours doing the morning show. And then I was in so many, but you well saw those two mornings, I was in so much pain that I couldn't hardly stand it. And so I was overdoing it, so I had to stay out a couple more weeks. But I believe I'm uh, back uh, for um, for the long haul here and should be able to do okay. Um, going through the therapy three times a week and um, and following back up with uh, Dr. Lamo for my back and Dr. Grise for my hip. And uh, it's interesting to take a look at the x-rays of your hip when you've got a titanium artificial hip in there because the left one looks natural you know with the with the bone and and all, all connected together and then you look on the right hand side and you see an artificial hip there you know <laughs> yeah it's just a just an interesting thing but um going through all this uh i found out there's a lot of folks around my age uh, older younger and around my age that have had uh, uh surgeries uh, either hip replacement, hip surgery, knee seems to be the top one. That seems to be the top of one that people have um, a surgery on is their knee and shoulder and elbow and back. And so, um, you know, uh, just uh, just you know, do your best to take care of your body. I had no idea that on my right hip that I was down to where it was bone on bone and where I had to have um, a hip surgery. But... Um, after a month of this, I'm back and walking around and, and trying to get better each day. But I appreciate all the thoughts and prayers and all the the, uh, uh, the text messages that we have received in here and phone calls at the stations. Welcome me back uh, this morning. 
and uh, look forward to being back in here on a regular basis. Now, usually we have Mondays with Meeks, with Stephen Meeks, but he got tied up in a meeting this morning, right? Yeah, Stephen texted yesterday afternoon and said he's going to be tied up this morning, can't make it. He's like to get in here Thursday or Friday. So Okay, Thursday or Friday. Friday with him, so. Okay. But hopefully we'll have Blake tomorrow as that legislative session's underway. So a lot going on in Atlanta. Yeah, um, a lot of work they do up there this time of year is they're trying to, to get the, what bills are going to talk about, get the committees together, try to hammer out all the details and and see what bills um, they're going to put together that are crossover on crossover day and then which ones pass and which one go to the governor for signature. Mm-hmm. We got the county itching to get in here and talk about their lost referendum come up less than thirty days away. So that advanced voting starts in February. So we had a big meeting Friday trying to get the message out, continue the pity for Wayne County lost five referendum on the ballot, but it won't be the only thing on the ballot. The presidential primary is in the same time. So presidential primary it should be a, it should be a large turnout for that vote. Well, basically, on the Republican side, all you're going to have at this point is Trump and Haley. Yeah, you do have independent and the independents in there. I don't know if there's a Democrat that's officially on the ballot for the state of Georgia against Biden or whatever. But uh, from what uh, the polls are showing, it looks like it's going to be a complete repeat of 2020 between Biden and Trump. Which is, <laughs> it's amazing. It doesn't seem to be a very popular. Uh, notion that people have in this country, uh, but it's the two that folks that are going to the ballots on the Republican side and the Democrat side are picking. So, um, you know, you go with uh, the one who has the the highest votes will represent the party, and we'll we'll see what happens. But it seems like uh, Haley, Nikki Haley, former South Carolina governor, um, is the only one that still that has a chance to uh, to. Uh, to compete with Trump, and, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens. She's the only one left. Everybody else dropped out. Everybody else has dropped out. Yep. Yeah. Don. DeSantis dropped out yesterday. Yeah, he dropped out. So. And, he threw, and he threw a support behind a Trump. It's amazing how these people can just blast each other apart, talk yeah. to say just all kinds yeah. of bad stuff about them, right. and then turn right around and endorse them when they drop out. Yeah, trashed him for three months, and now he's his best buddy. I know. It's just <laughs> Politics. That's why politics is. And, and the politics is just something that's else. He, isn't it? That's why you can't trust any politicians. I mean, you just tear them apart, rip them apart. And now Trump is acting like, well, you know, all those things I said about, you know, Don DeSantis, it's don't mean nothing now. Don't yeah. mean nothing now. I appreciate his support. And, yeah, and, it's the best joke. How do you know a politician's lying? His lips are moving. So. <laughs> that's what it's all about. Oh, boy. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with all that. But we could have, um, you know, unless they find something really uh, uh, bad with Trump with, with, with all this legal stuff that he's going through. I mean, he's either out campaigning or he's in the court. So it seems like he's one of the two places. Unless they find something really, really bad there that he gets convicted on uh, at this particular juncture, it looks like he's going to be the nominee unless – Haley can come through uh, in Iowa and then in her in her own state of uh, South Carolina and make a game out of it. New Hampshire, Iowa's already over. Uh, not Iowa, I meant New Hampshire. Yeah. Yeah, Iowa's caucuses yeah. is New Hampshire. Yeah, New Hampshire's boat. tomorrow, and then That's she right. goes to South Carolina. But like I said, Tim Scott, who's from South Carolina, turned around and you know after she appointed him to that big position, she, he turned around and endorsed Trump as well. So it's yeah, about setting yourself up to get into the Trump or uh, into the Trump. Um, um, an organization into in, in, in uh, to a cabinet position or an ambassador position. They they're looking for the out for their future. I guess, and uh, many people will though. Hasn't they haven't won, so that's a question. Democrats are loving every minute of it because they think they can win and beat Trump so nationally. So we'll see how it plays out. It will be because you know on a national level, uh, Haley uh, easily beats uh, Biden on a national level. Okay, because you got a lot of independents out there. You know, one of these usual thing is 40 percent always vote Democrat, 40 percent always vote Republican. And it's 20 percent that that can go vote either way. And that's who they usually go after. And it's that 20 percent that says uh, we like Haley more than we do Biden. But when you put Trump against Biden, that's a lot closer, closer election right there. Oh, yes. This is probably the earliest 
a race has been decided. You know, I mean, normally you have to go all the way through all the primaries and presidential, but this this is like it's already over. I know you got an Most 81 year old and you over. got a 77 year old that are running against each other. But and the country says, yeah, they're too old to run. And, yeah, we don't want another 2020 again, but. That's why the, the voters are deciding. You know, it's, it's, they're, they're saying one thing, but they're doing something else in the ballot box. Yeah, it's kind of sad. Eighty percent of Americans don't want this decision, but they that's don't. what we're going to get. So, yeah, that's where we're headed. But it just doesn't look like Nikki Haley's getting much traction at all. So, the Republicans already decided Trump's their candidate. So it's going to be Trump against Biden, unless the Democrats at the last minute decide he's not fit and put somebody else in there. But I don't see who else they can put in there. So. I guess that's the decision in November. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah, we'll see how it plays out. You know, you never can tell what might happen if, if you know, if, if Haley does decent in New Hampshire and then wins her home state, then uh, then maybe there'll be a little more traction there as time goes by. But people usually like to throw you know their their support behind who they think's going to be the winner, and that's what happens because that means perhaps maybe they can have a position in their administration get favors and that kind of stuff like that. It's, and, they, so. don't, they don't think she's going to run her own state. So is that when she drops out after she loses to South Carolina? I mean, she's staying in it definitely Tuesday, and then she's going to her own state. But right. the poll shows she's not going to win there either. So that's probably when she gets out. So be interested to see who she If yeah, she know. loses her own state, it's going to be hard for her to continue on, I imagine. I and mean, she'll probably endorse it. Like I said, they all made that pledge except Trump. You know, they all signed that pledge that they would support the nominee. They all signed it, except Donald Trump didn't sign it. So, But I said, that's where we're headed. Biden against Trump, repeat. See how, it, see if there's a different result. But like that, talking to Buddy Carter, that border situation is just a mess, man. It's just, he's talked about it for years. But you see those videos of those, those people just crossing I mean, by the just, thousands, just walking right across I asked him, the I said, Rio Grande. Said, it's not like the Omaha. I said, where Omaha, these, you, can, you can't walk across it. I said, where are these people going? He said, they're going all over the place. So all over the crazy. country. It's crazy. All over the country. And, and now they've been starting, you know, for the past several months, they've been busting it up to um, to these uh, states that uh, basically welcome them. Uh, New York, New York City, Chicago, Seattle, all these places, and suddenly they're saying, "Whoa, whoa, we don't want any more of these people in there." It's an economic burden because you got to consider everyone that comes in this country. Guess what? They're promised free education, free health care, free housing, all that stuff. And guess who's paying for it? You and me by the by the hundreds of thousands each year. That's what's hard to get your head around again. Free health care. Everything. Everybody, everybody knows how. And they're, they're saying that, you know, they, it's crazy. They, and then that uh, some of the blue states want them to be able to vote and get driver's license and stuff like that without being a legal resident. We have got laws on the book passed by former Congresses that says what you need to do to be a legal citizen of this country to be able to, to have the privileges. And it's just being ignored all these laws are being ignored for political purposes it's a mess it is it's a mess it it, it is just flat out a mess that how a country can just allow thousands of people a day just walk across the border and you're talking you're only talking you know only are you talking about just the average joe below citizens you're talking about all these criminals that are coming across you know, they, they they see an economic boom by coming here and being able to do criminal activity here in, in the country. Then you've got other foreigners that come in from countries that are enemies of America. They're walking across to set up cells, see, uh, sleeper cells here in America to be able to be activated at any time they're called upon. It is just a mess. And how you can have leaders of a country just say, just turn their back and say, well, just y'all come on across. It's just it just amazes me how you, it, you, know, you the commander in chief's the commander in chief. You know, you're protecting America, and this has been going on for decades. It's just not happening right now. It's been going on for decades. I like Buddy Carter's line. He says, the "Greatest country in the world. Everybody's trying to get in. Everybody's trying to get out." <laughs> <laughs> well, when you pay for everything. 
Everybody's, yeah. everybody's trying to get out. Everybody's of course, trying to get you in. come across and look at all the stuff. Crazy. Yeah, it's just it's a, it's just a mess. So it'll be interesting to see what happens as uh, as the uh, the month moves forward. As as we talk about New Hampshire and then South Carolina, those will be the two states there that Haley's going to have to make a, a move to be able to stay in in the um, in the contest with, against with Trump. And will end, will the will the independents affected any like Kennedy? They said that'll take more votes away from the Republicans than it will the Democrats. So. Uh, Kennedy could be the Ross Perot. If Ross Perot hadn't a run back in 1992 like he did, more than likely uh, the, uh, Bush, the senior Bush, probably would have won that election. But Ross Perot took those uh, votes away from him, and Bill Clinton won. So you just never can tell. Never can tell. Long way away from November, so a lot can happen. Yeah, a lot, lot can happen there. It was it was good news that you had on this morning on local news and Colt Brockington getting that uh, award. That is just fantastic. Yeah, great honor. I said only one given out in the state of Georgia, and Colt Brockington from Wayne County received it this past Friday in a nice assembly. So, our congrats to him. And what's the name of the award again? You remember off the head? The Milliken Education the Milliken. Award. Wow, uh-huh. it's the Milliken family, and that's. Uh, and we've only had one other winner, and that was Amy Denny back in 1999, right? It says that's the last one. Last yeah, one. Yeah, last one. I'm, not, I'm not sure if they had no, one before that. One before that. But uh, just congratulations to Colt Brockington for uh, winning that award. It says, hey, when are the uh, Wayne County commissioners coming on to uh, promote the um, one cent sales tax? I said they met Friday. They're itching to get on. I said I had, I had to wait and see what the schedule. You know. Well, we're itching for them to be on. Come on down. We'd love to talk to you. Have a chat. All right, Bob. We're just about out of time. Anything else? Oh, well, we got we got to mention football. Um, Tough loss for the Bills. Tyler, know, Tyler Bass just missed that thing. Hasn't missed a field goal all year. Georgia Southern boy missed one. He felt. He felt off. It was a tough interview watching him in the locker room. He just he took it hard. So. 43 yarder and misses it. But one play didn't decide it. But no, said, one play didn't decide it. And we just tied it up. You don't know if uh, they would have won or not. Patrick Mahomes is special. I said, and Travis Kelsey stepped up, had a big game. He's, he hasn't been having that kind of a season all year, but he had a big game on Sunday. So. Yes, sir. Well, well, his lady was up there in the box. Yeah, Taylor's you know. still there cheering yes, him on. Sir. Yeah. Taylor Swift up there cheering her man on. He's got those two TDs, man. His brother looked athletic. I don't know why he's retiring. He jumped out of that booth and come back in. <laughs> yeah, has he, did he definitely retire? I, yeah, I heard that he, yeah, he, he hesitated it. after he said it. Uh, I think he's retired. Uh, well, we'll see, he, he we'll see on that. At least he announced it. He's, he's done. So. Uh, we'll see. But it still looks like he can play. So. Yeah, but uh, right now Baltimore is favored over Kansas City. Yeah, they're at home. Yeah, but like I said, the conspiracies in. They say from day one, the logo always has the Ravens colors and the 49ers colors. So it's the Ravens, 49ers, just like it has been the last three years. Colors the, in what? The Super Bowl logo. Oh, the logo. Yeah, you didn't see that. That's no, the, I didn't see that. That's the NFL conspiracy. If you look at the NFL logo, you take the team colors and those are the two teams. Uh, get they don't. In. They change the logo color every year. Yeah, in the last three years, the colors of the logos have been the teams in the Super Bowl. So they've already said that Ravens and the 49ers are Ravens, playing. Ravens and the 49ers, you can take it to the bank. Take huh? it to the bank. Lock it, let it take it to the bank. That's Conspir- right. Conspir- Call up your book in yeah. Vegas and get it done, huh? Conspiracy scene. <laughs> that's, what they're, that's what they said three weeks ago. So it's proven out to be true. You know, How was, about the lines? Just one game away from Super Bowl. you got yes. to pull for the lines. you got to pull for the lines, I mean, man. I mean, jeez. I mean, you know, when's yeah. the last time they've been relevant, you know? <laughs> Was it thirty years since they've been in this yeah. position? So, but they got a tough road to go yeah, to San Francisco. Yeah, they got a tough road there against that Christian McCaffrey's fun to watch. He's just a great running back. Isn't I he like a great him. running back? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I think you the think Brock, they got him tied up, and somehow yeah. he wiggles yeah. through there. Mystery irrelevant. Mr. Brock Purdy, that's having a great year. So yeah, they're a great story. But and most all the games were close. You, you guarantee you know you had the best teams yeah. out there. Most every single game was close. Yeah, the Ravens blew out the Texans. Yeah, mo- I said most, yeah. not all, but most. Right, yeah. Lamar Jackson's having a heck of a year. Definitely the league MVP. So it'll be tough, but if anybody can pull it off, it'll be Patrick Mahomes. And, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. 
And we'll see. We'll talk more about the football as the week goes along. Well, Bob, you have a good day. Okay. All right, the world-famous Butch and Bob show here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jess of Big Dog Country Radio. And it's brought to you by First Southern Bank, by Vans Barbecue, Murphy Builder Supply, and O'Quinn & Associates.